Yo, what's up? How's it going? We're at another weird ass spot where I don't even know where I am, but that's quarantine life. So you know how it goes. Today, I'm super excited because we get to talk about one of my favorite subjects. They're the cars that are unsuspecting, generally front wheel drive, unless you're shelling out a little bit more cash, then you can, uh, you can get the all wheel drive ones. Turbocharged and even sometimes supercharged hot hatches. Before we hop into that, make sure to head on over to fitmentindustries.com and check out our huge online gallery. Everything from helping with fitment sizes to checking out those wheels you've been eyeballing and seeing how they look on your car. There's even a good plenty, a uh, couple of hot hatches in there, bud. So make sure to go check it out. Disclaimer, I'm going to be going through the cars that we can get here in the good old United States. I don't want this video to be like 30 minutes long. And if uh, you do want another one, maybe we can do a part two. So comment down below. Starting off in this list and in no particular order, I want to talk about the Mark IV GTI. One of my personal favorites we're gonna be talking about today. Coming in a 1.8 turbo or a beautiful sounding VR6, you really can't go wrong with either option. The 1.8T scoots in at about 180 horsepower. Don't let that pee in your headlights, all right, bud? With tons of aftermarket support for these cars, slapping on some bolt-on modifications and a tune will make this car an absolute blast to drive. The VR6 is nothing to shake a stick at either. I, I don't know why people say shake a stick at. I, I, I've never shaken a stick at anything. Coming in at two 200 horses slapping an exhaust on this puppy will immediately have you smiling from ear to ear. Also, if you have some pocket change, boosting the VR6 platform is very possible and I would recommend. This car has some subtle looks, but it's a timeless one if you ask me, especially if you're able to dive into one of the 20th anniversary ones. It comes with a body kit, BBS wheels stock, and Recaro seats right off the old line. It's a car enthusiast starter pack, basically. Mark IV GTIs make this list for their affordable costs around five grand or less if you get a little higher mileage. Unless you're scooping up a 20th, then you're usually gonna have to shell out some more money. A simple drop and some dope wheels really can set this car off. And the mod ability, everything from cosmetics to bolt-ons, you'll have some variety. Side note, if there's any way you can get some more cash, get the Mark IV R32. All wheel drive, the VR straight six, oh my Oh my God, it's so good. One of my all time favorite cars ever. Next on this list, and it's a little pricier than the last, and I may be a little bit partial, the Focus ST. The monetary value of these cars has plummeted, but their smiles per miles has remained the same. Coming in at 252 horsepower stock, you can definitely pull some more power out of these cars easily. Not bad to work on, fairly reliable, and have a huge aftermarket scene. These cars have become pretty affordable since Ford decided to pull the old plug on it in the US and only offering them in Europe now. There's also a trim level for everyone. Wanna just get in the car and you don't give a fuck about GPS or fancy seats or any of that bullshit? Hop into an ST1. Want factory Recaro seats that match the color of your car and a touchscreen radio because you need to flex whenever you have a passenger? ST2 is the trim for you. Bars. Bank willing to give you a decent loan and get a low interest and you love full leather Recaros and headlights with projectors and daytime running lights? Then you'll be happy with the ST3 trim. For real though, the nice amenities of this car paired with its torque happy engine and decent handling make this car a blast and a solid choice for many. Buyer beware, you're not going to be winning all these straight line races or drag races. The car can be a little costly to get over 300 horse. The Fiesta ST is also a great option if you want something you can find for even cheaper and make you feel like you can legally drive a go-kart on the road. However, I'm a big boy, so that's why it didn't officially make the list. Don't need the Fiesta fat shaming me, all right? Next up on the list, are you different from the rest? Are you a little bit out of the norm? Are you sick of normal cars? The next car on this list is strange, but in a good way, the Mini Cooper. Ranging from supercharged to turbocharged variants, this car has pretty much the definition of quirky. It has an interesting interior design that stayed true to since its first initial designs, and they've kind of kept that going all along. When you pick up this car, you're definitely going to realize its heritage, but don't let the name fool you. For being a Mini, the interior is actually pretty comfortable, 
pretty big, pretty roomy, and it even has room for some of us thick boys. You can find the second gen Mini Coopers from five to 8,000 bucks and still have under 100,000 miles on them. If you can push the budget up a little bit, third gens are going 12 to 15K all day, which isn't bad at all. If you can't tell at all, these affordable hot hatches are definitely geared towards handling and driving more than straight line speed. If you can manage to get a turbocharged Mini Cooper with a six speed manual, you're in for a fun ride. These are my top three, but I love hot hatches and I wanted to throw some honorable mentions in as well. First one being the Caliber SRT4, generally referred to as man vans. They're another affordable, great option. As long as you can get past the god awful Dodge Caravan style steering wheel, you're getting an aggressive looking hatch with all the goodies of the SRT4 platform. Another mention would have to be the Mark V GTIs. I know we talked about the Mark IV, but the Mark Vs are starting to come down in price and they're getting more affordable every day. I enjoy the Mark IV a little more, just personal preference. I like the looks of it, but the Mark Vs can be just as fun and still look good if you put some wheels and coilovers, bags, preferably on them. There's obviously some amazing options overseas and with increased budget, but we'll leave that for another episode. What's your favorite hot hatch? Drop a comment below and let me know. Bars. If you enjoyed the video and want more, make sure to hit the subscribe button. We're almost to 500,000 subscribers, which is absolutely insane. So thank you so much to everyone for the support and hopefully we'll hit 500K soon. Don't forget, wheels, tires, suspension, fitmentindustries.com.